I might have overrated that slightly. Anyway, let's get into it. Hey there and welcome to another video from ICTO. This week we're doing a one month review of the new Samsung Galaxy Watch. Now I've had this watch for just over a month now, previously owning the Gear S3 Frontier and for a short space of time also the TicWatch Pro, and felt it's now time to give my thoughts on the latest flagship smartwatch from Samsung. This video is going to focus on the 46mm version of the watch which comes in the black and silver combo. So let's get started. Let's start with the build quality. When compared to the Gear S3 there's not much in it, however Samsung are boasting this military grade durability. I think that comes from the Corning Gorilla Glass DX screen protection. Over the past month my Galaxy Watch has really been put to the test. It's had four full solid days of swimming, it's had loads of dust from a house renovation, it's had several scrapes and bangs against walls, none of which are actually showing any evidence of wear and tear. So let's move on to the uh, the noticeable difference between this watch and other um, smartwatches out there, which I think is the bezel, which is the main navigation of how you're getting around this watch. Now, as a previous owner of uh, an Apple Watch, um, uh, the Gear S3, Frontier and the uh, Galaxy Watch, and I've, I've also dabbled with things like the TicWatch Pro, I find the, the bezel on this actually a most intuitive way of navigating around all the settings, all the applications. Um, you also find because of the size of the screen, albeit quite a large one on the, uh, the watch, it's still a small screen to navigate around, your fingers aren't getting in the way of the information as you're scrolling through using the bezel. The bezel also offers up some level of protection for that screen. I actually find the bezel so intuitive. Going to another watch like I did with the TicWatch Pro briefly, I actually struggled getting around its navigation. I just don't understand why people haven't learned from Samsung and picked up this design feature. So turning the bezel clockwise exposes the widgets. These provide quick access to the information within the app like weather, fitness tracking, heart rate monitoring, your music and much much more. From the home screen if you turn it counterclockwise that reveals the notifications allowing you to reply to messages with a surprisingly easy to use keyboard, emojis and uh, voice. But be warned it is Bixby, it is terrible, I think all they've done is rebadged S voice as Bixby, it's not made any improvements at all. Uh, the, the voice recognition on it, it was slow, sluggish, quite often got things wrong as well. I actually found it a lot quicker using the on-screen keyboard than using Bixby on the uh, smartwatch. So going through the buttons quickly, uh, the top button acts as your back button and the bottom button is uh, classified as your home button. So single press on it will get you your applications and then you can use the bezel to uh, scroll around your applications. However, the, the home button is a multi-function button so if you were to double tap the um, button you can program it to do certain things. So in my case I've got it launching the uh, symbol uh, clock interface for me. Triple click on that button brings up the SOS function and it allows it to dial home, send your location via your mobile phone. So moving on to the screen now, they're using a 1.3 Super AMOLED screen. is bright and colour rich, something we've come to expect from Samsung's display technology. It's easy to see everything, even during outdoor runs, thanks to the adaptive brightness settings. And its smart use of blacks, especially in the background, burns fewer pixels on the 320 by 320 resolution. The one downside is that the screen is slow to update, even when it's woken up. The time and steps seem to show old figures for half a second or so, but then quickly update. So let's talk about the battery life. Now, as a previous owner of the Apple Watch that barely made it through the day, and then the Gear S3 that would last roughly about two days easily. I was very sceptical over the claims that Samsung were making about the Galaxy Watch, but I was pleasantly surprised that the four days battery is achievable. I should note that I have my heart rate and stress monitors set to continuous, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, GPS all turned on. After all, if you are going to have a watch with the things on, you might as well use the things. Although the only thing I do have turned off is the always on display and still with everything turned on, four days is easily achievable. Very impressed with this battery life on this watch. As we shift through the menus with the rotating bezel, the colourful, creative looking widgets stand out as easily to read yet very informative. The weather widget is a great example. It displays key information in a very large font with highs and lows underneath in smaller characters. There are blue precipitation percentage and red UV level metrics that run along the circular perimeter of the display. Tapping into this menu reveals a just as colourful 5 day forecast that you can scroll down further information. 
So let's have a quick look at the fitness stuff. First way, with the heart rate. With the built-in heart rate monitor, the Galaxy Watch can track up to 39 activities, auto-detecting six of them. It'll even monitor your sleep cycles and coax you into calming down when your heart rate is abnormally high. The big difference between the Galaxy Watch and the Gear S3 besides the extra day battery is that it's more fitness focused thanks to additional sensors and a revamped Samsung Health app. It also detects six of the 39 exercises and still helpfully nudges you when you're too sedentary. It also has a pretty accurate sleep tracker telling you when you have been in deep sleep, light sleep, awake. It's also now waterproof down to 50 meters, allowing you to take it swimming, something that the Gear S3 Sport had before, but in a more adult design. With the addition of the 50 meter waterproof rating, you can now safely take this watch swimming, although it can be quite nerving submerging an expensive watch for the very first time. Putting the watch into swimming tracking mode, auto sets the water lock mode, and it will monitor your stroke type, the strokes per length, and the number of lengths and the time providing a comprehensive and accurate measure of your swimming workout. We tested this in the local pool and we were surprised to see the accuracy that this watch actually came with, the amount of strokes, the length and the time uh, given. Once finished, a simple long press of that home button turns off the water lock mode and ejects the water from the speakers by playing a few loud tones. So let's come on to some of the downsides of this watch. First of all is the Tizen OS. Uh, Samsung has still chosen not to go with Google Wear OS. They've uh, chosen their own operating system here. Samsung's core apps are polished, but uh, the Galaxy App Store lacks critical third-party apps, notably things like Google Fit, Google Maps, Google Pay, Google Assistant, and WhatsApp. You might notice a theme there, a lot of Google apps missing. Something that uh, the Wear OS would bring to the watch. Also, Samsung Pay loses the uh, MST, the magnetic strip thing, despite the fact that the Gear S3 did have it. By also not having some of these core Android applications, you do lose certain key features like turn-by-turn -turn navigation, something that is built into other watches that are running things like Wear OS and Watch OS. Another downside, and this is quite a biggie, is Bixby. It's clearly a rebranded S-Voice. Um, I'm not a fan of Bixby on the Samsung Galaxies when I used to have one of those, and it's even more terrible on the smartwatch. Most of the time it didn't keep up with me, it would often get common words completely wrong. As I say, I think it's a simple rebranding of S-Voice, there's not really much difference. I would have liked to see something like Google Assistant being brought onto this watch instead. The other thing you need to be prepared for is uh, if you're going to wear this uh, for business use, if you're like me and you like wearing the larger watches, then this one is definitely a uh, downside for you, <laughs> although it's still not as large as some of the watches uh, from people like Garmin out there. However, it can be a slight issue if you're wearing tight long sleeve shirts. It can be a bit of a nightmare getting this watch in and out of that sleeve. So let's have a little quick comparison of uh, what the alternatives out there. So as I said, one, I was once an owner of an Apple Watch, which I enjoyed whilst being part of the Apple ecosystem, but jumping ship to the Galaxy S9 meant my watch basically became a very expensive paperweight. I'll admit I sorely missed the deep integration that Apple products have with each other, however that brings me on to another frustration. That is the only thing that Apple plays well with. Unlike the Galaxy Watch, where actually you can put the Galaxy Watch onto an Apple device, albeit some of the functionality is reduced, at least they are playing with other vendors out there. TicWatch Pro was also another smartwatch in the running, however it quickly frustrated me when it had no turning bezel. I quickly got used to the Gear S3 rotating bezel, went onto the Galaxy Watch rotating bezel, I don't seem to be able to go back. The TicWatch Pro also had the secondary LCD screen on top of the OLED screen, which again in bright sunlight I thought just made it look a little bit cloudy. So again, <laughs> went back to the Galaxy watch. So what do I think? Is it worth upgrading from the Gear S3 to the Gear S watch? Personally, for the extra battery life I got, the additional tracking features and the swim proofing, I thought it was a worthy upgrade. If you're not into all of that, then less so. But I do think you're seeing an evolution rather than revolution uh, going on in the watches here at the moment. So that's it from me. Thank you for watching this quick review video on the Galaxy Watch. Please leave any comments you have in the comments section below. Remember to subscribe and like and hit that notification bell if you want to see further videos from our channel. Question, what smartwatch are you currently using? Are you into Apple watches? Are you into the Tick watch? Are you looking at the new Huawei watch? Have you already got a Galaxy watch? 
tell us in the comments section what your smartwatch is of choice and why you plucked for that one. Guys, thank you for watching this video. I'll see you on the next one.